Hey guys! Alright guys, we're here today to do one of our famous, infamous, intergalactic double headers. Starting off with a band that we've done on the channel before. We did a video from these guys back on another Monday double header a yeah. while ago, a while ago. These guys are from Minnesota. Uh, Minneapolis, I think. They're Minneapolis, Minnesota. I think that's where Ooh. they're from. Yeah, uh, perhaps a, a tough place to live in these days. Yeah. Uh, a lot of turmoil happening there. But anyways, uh, outside of that, they're a great band. They're a great thrash metal band. A bunch of young guys, really young dudes. Uh, and I really like their sound and I really like what they do. And they have a new video. The name of the song is Tainted Minds. And there's a little clip of us. They asked us to send them a little clip and they would include us. But I think the clip, I haven't seen the full video. I just saw the, like the first one second to see where that clip was. And it's one of the squares on this big screen. So, so when you guys are watching the video at the beginning, just pay attention to the squares. And try finding us. It's, like, where, it's like, where's Waldo? Yeah, where's Waldo's? Those. Yeah. Those. There's two of us. All right. So I'm excited to see what the music brings and what the video brings beyond that because I only saw that that little beginning of that clip. Look, we're making our we're, we're paving our way in the middle. I know. Industry. I know. We, we 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 started by the cameo in the last Enciferum video. Now we have a little uh, cameo on this one. Next is full blown. Next we have to be in the latex Termion? suits. Yeah, and latex suits and on a Termion Catalot video. All right. You ready for this? Agony reigns. Uh, tainted minds. Ready? Yeah. All right.
Oh. <laughs> oh. I love these guys. You know, they're like probably just a couple of years older than you. Really? Yeah, and this is how they rip. They're like the uh, alien weaponry of the United States. Like a young group of guys playing thrash metal. Oh, man. I, talking I need, about I, what's real? Yeah, keeping it real in the video and, and the lyrics. Uh, I, I, let me say this. Before we even talk about the song, the lyrics, and the video. I got to send their info to a bunch of contacts that I have in Europe with some labels. These guys got to get some exposure, man. Well, this they, is the they, second... They don't have a label? No. Oh. No, no. They they had they had an EP. They sent us the EP and some T-shirts and stuff when we did their first video. I and I love that video. They were like it, it was. They were like in a jam yeah, session. In the garage. In, uh, no, it's like a basement or something or so, whatever. Yeah. Something like that. And I love that video. I thought they absolutely ripped it. it ap incredible. This one is even better. Even better. I love it. It has that old I school love the lyrics though. I think that's what for me the drawing point on this song was the lyrics. But what about the, the, the guitar riff? I everything. Mean, the song, like, with, absolutely with the destroys. Lyrics, with the lyrics is how it has everything, like, kind of bound up. It's not like they're talking about random stuff. They're talking about what's happening. I know, and I like that. And I like the fact that the song has so much aggression. Yeah. The song is so aggressive. Even the vocals are very aggressive. Because they feel what they're talking about. I, I love this track. I absolutely love how it rips. It has... It's fresh. You know what I mean? It's It's a fresh track. It's a fresh song. But it has that old school thrash metal sound that just like just destroy just obliterates everything. And I love it. And the fact that the song becomes a little bit more political because of the lyrics, because of the context of what's happening, I love that. Honestly. I know some people are like, eh, you know, I don't want my music to be political. Well, you know what? Too bad. Uh, go, go listen to uh, Mariah Carey. I feel like this is this music should be the political thing it is. It's hard for you to live in a world that's political. And and and, and, that, have... and that not reflect yeah. on the art that you create, because you're you're an artist, right? Either you're a painter, or or you you write poetry, you write books, or you make music. You're an artist. You live in a certain world. That world uh, uh, drives who you've become. You're you're a, you're a product of the society that you live in. It's impossible for the things that affect that society not to affect you, and therefore not to affect the art that you're creating. One derives from the other, and and, and just keeps pushing itself forward. If if you expect somebody who lives in in a certain society that's faced with certain things around them, and not have those things influence the art that they create, then you're taking away their sepsis and their autonomy in terms of how they can create the art that reflects the world that they see. Then, then it's 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 fake. Talking about fake news, then it's fake. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I, I to me, it's very simple. If I don't like the message, I just don't listen, right? But I, I'm never gonna take away the right of somebody to express their views yeah. with their art. It's it it is what it is. If I don't like it, then if I don't like the message, I'll just listen to something else. You know what I mean? That's how I view it. This song. Politically driven, I love it. I love the content of it, regardless if you agree with it or not. That's it's irrelevant. Still a good song. It's to me is irrelevant. When it, when it comes to bands that have their political things that I don't agree with, I still don't care because if they make good music, they make good music. I, I saw a post from Fit for an Autopsy on their Facebook page about things that are happening in the world right now, and some people are like, "Oh, I'm not gonna listen to you guys anymore. You're being all political." Wow, where have you been? Where have you been that you're listening to Fit for an Autopsy on a regular basis and you haven't realized that their music is political? Like there's a political message Black behind Mammoth, it? There's no, there's like, like really? Like now you're discovering that? It's like this, it's the same people who now are discovering that Rage Against the Machine is a political band or System of a Down. Really? Like <laughs> really? Like now you're discovering it? Like where have you been? Have you been reading the lyrics to the songs? Like one guy said, Rage Against the Machine, what kind of machine do you think they were talking about? A dishwasher? That, that's not what they were talking about. Rage Against the Fridge. <sighs> Like that kind of stuff drives me crazy. I, I I'm happy to listen to a politically driven message track, even if I don't agree with the message on the track. It, it's their right to 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 express themselves yeah. in their art. As long as the music's good, and as long as they're not breaking any laws or, yeah, or you know, or like it's listening. inciting violence or whatever that case might be, I, I'm fine. Uh, it's not like, you know, like I said, you have the choice to listen or not listen if you don't agree with what they're saying. You know what I mean? Uh, go back to, going back to politically driven songs, you don't have to go very far. Look at Megadeth, Holy Wars. That's a politically driven song. You may agree with it, you may disagree with it, but it's a politically driven song. So you, you have, to, politically driven songs have existed throughout, since art, since music has been created. In Portugal, we were a dictatorship under Salazar. 
music was one of the only tools that people had to fight that fascist regime. It was called uh, music of intervention. So they would use metaphors to in the songs to represent political uh, uh, ideas and yeah. to talk bad about the, because they can say you know f you because otherwise they would get arrested and probably killed. Well, they use the, they uh, used metaphors to to, uh, to to convey the message with metaphors so that they could the music could actually be played uh, without being censored. Do you see what I'm saying? So I I uh, I love this track. I love how fast it is how much it rips, how heavy it is, the vocals, and then when you add the video and the political message into it, man, it's, it's, it's all I could ask for. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I like to it's see It's a 10 out of 10 people. song, and then I saw myself, and then it's 11 out of 10. Oh, seeing you in that little cameo at the front passing me the remote yeah. control that made it 11 out of 10? All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right, so this was... This was oh, fuck. I, honestly, I got to send these guys... I got to send some of their links some of the contacts I have in some labels because they, they need to... Young guys absolutely ripping. What, what, what is Napalm Records when you need them? Yeah. They sign everybody. I mean, they sign Chris Bowes and a plate of beans. Why not sign these guys? Anyways, I was going to grab the headphones because I wanted to listen to this song again. All right. Anyways, we're done for right now, but there's another video coming right after. It's a Patreon request. So uh, keep refreshing. Stay tuned. And uh, we'll be back in, uh, in a few short seconds, right? Yeah. All right. See you guys. See ya.